Welcome to today's episode of Highway to Health, where we are going to be interviewing the most celebrated Canadian T1 paracycling athlete of all time, Shelly Gauthier. So this is a huge episode and I can't wait to get started, so let's get going. My name is Ben. I'm a dietitian, athlete, and a travel junkie. I've learned that health is about the journey, not the destination. I'm on a quest to understand that it's not a one-size-fits-all and there's much more to learn on the road less traveled. Join me on the highway to health. Today, we're in Shelley's hometown in the Niagara region, where she's invited us along for a group ride with a few of her friends. I have no idea what it's like to live with a disability that affects my day-to-day -day activities, and hopefully, we can learn a little bit more about those challenges. But before we do, we're going to meet up with Alan, the president of the Shelley Gautier Parasport Foundation, to learn more about what they do. Hey Ben, how you doing? Good, Alan. How's the drive in? Good to see you, guy. Good to see Glad you. Glad you're here. Yeah, absolutely. I got eight hand cycles, so I really need your help. Have you ever even seen a hand cycle? I've seen them. But, but you've never... Is this it? Uh, yeah, just pull it back. Yep. Oh. There's eight hand cycles in one trailer. You're putting me to work today, aren't That's you? Right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. All right, so, let's do this. There are low rider hand cycles. Okay. And these are... This, this is a second upright hand cycle. Right. Depending on the person's disability, mm -hmm. many people can't get down low for a low rider. Right. So, so you can down. see, right. for this one, uh -huh. when you go from your wheelchair, transfer, you're the same height. Right. When we bring out a low rider, you'll see the huge difference. Now this is your traditional low rider hand cycle. Right. That many people do end up, they can use them for racing. Nowhere in North America does an organization buy hand cycles and then let people use them for free. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole purpose of the foundation, is to have people who, these are $5,000 units used. Oof. So most people who, have a who live with a disability cannot afford it. 80% of people who live with a disability are under or unemployed. Right. They don't have a spare six thousand dollars for us. Is this the whole fleet, or is there more? There's got to. <laughs> this be is more, just right? for the Niagara region. Right. We have units in Brantford, Whitby, and Bromont, Quebec. So all together, how many units are there? We're certainly now in the hundreds. We're not in the thousands yet. Right. But we're in the hundreds after three years of running program. Shelly, yeah. Ben, it's a pleasure nice to finally meet, to meet you. you. We've been a big fan of yours for a long time. And thank 12 you. World Championships. Is that right? 12? Eight years. Right. And I won the time trial eight times, and I won the road race eight times, so it's actually 16 world championships. 16 world. That's the most. Of uh, cycling, yeah. In cycling in general. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel good, yeah. and I want to encourage other people to get involved. Like the ride we did today mm -hmm. was a recreational ride. Right. And to get people out of their homes and get them on bikes and get them socializing mm -hmm. and talking to other cyclists. How did you get involved with the Shelley Gauthier Foundation? Um, about two years ago, I work out at uh, Brock University Wellness Center. Okay. And they had a flyer that they were going to do an indoor spin class. Okay. So I was looking for something different to do. Right. So I took it. Mm -hmm. And um, then when we did the spin class, then we took outdoors. Right. Then and we did the outdoor program when uh, it, the weather got nicer. Okay. Prior to that, what, what kind of exercises, what kind of fitness things were you doing in the gym? Uh, just uh, weightlifting. Just weightlifting. Uh, circuits, uh, medicine ball, right. uh, free weights. You feel like an ordinary person, I right. guess you would. Because you're out cycling with everybody else. Yeah. What Alan's told me is that he's created, along with Shelly, a lot more of a community. Oh yeah, I, I, met, I met more people and from mm. the cycling, um, it led me to, to learn how to play slide hockey. Okay. And then from there, I'm, I'm kayaking now. Now, did, were you riding one of Shelly's bikes uh, of the foundation before you got to this one? No. No, you no. weren't. I brought this one and my know-how to the foundation. Oh, okay. So you just like linked up through different social groups and everything? Um, yeah, the lady that I rode with, yep. I met her on the parkway. She was in a, she had a prosthetic leg. Right. She had a, a bike similar. 
we talked. She, she was joined with the Shelley Gosey Parasport Foundation, and she said you'd make a great program leader, and she brought me in. Now, you've obviously done a lot of work at the systemic level to remove a lot of the barriers that riders that are disabled face. How many more barriers are there? Oh, they never stop. The biggest barrier to, you know, Shelley and Holly and Shelley to ride is the role of, I call it an athlete assistant. You need an athlete assistant in general to assist in the process. Mm -hmm. For example, when these bikes go out, you need an, almost a one-to-one -one athlete assistant to transfer people from the wheelchair into the hand cycle. Mm -hmm. First, you got to adjust the hand cycle just for them. Then the transfer process. Then you need a team leader to lead them you know, along the bike path. And you need following assistance if anything happens that they're there. Even if you are an able-bodied rider, I would want people to look into these resources to really see how they can help everyone out. Yeah, that would be really nice if people who have raced and don't race anymore and just want to get out on a Saturday or Sunday morning and go riding with somebody. Mm -hmm. that, and they can be a great help. So I think that what you said is really important. All right, Shelly, I just helped Alan unpack about five or six hand cycles that look exactly the same. What's so different about this? Oh, well, it's adjusted for, for myself. Okay. The, the seat is brought up a little bit. So this one up here? Yeah. Uh, okay. And then your footrest at, at there so these is guys right brought here. in a little bit, so your heel hits the, uh, the black strap. Oh, okay. So, okay, you have to strap in fully yeah. there. And, and, then, and then the hand crank is adjusted for your... So it doesn't hit your chest. Yeah. And to top it all off, we got our uh, it's labeled at the back. We got letters oh, okay. on the back of the bike. Very so cool. So we know which one is ours. I understand you're gonna transfer yourself into this thing. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Okay, so my ability is this leveled up. Right. So I strictly use my arms for right. everything. Okay. Um, one leg at a time. Right. Now please let me know if there's anything I can help yeah, you. Yeah, I will when right. if my if my legs start, if I get a bit of spasms then I'll sure, get some help. But it looks uncomfortable, but it's not. Okay. <laughs> I had some people help me that would try it able-bodied and see if their legs would hurt or do any damage. And so that's... Um, not, not. There we go, okay. Just holding up my brake. There we go. So. It's actually, you could help me just lift my knee here yeah, and pull absolutely. my foot around. Pull your foot around? There, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so All right. after I've got my legs where they need to be. Okay, and that's up here, right? My feet will go there, yes. Yep. So I uh, just scooch my uh, butt up there. Slide up and yep. there. All right. And Set move. my hips and then, yep. yeah. So and then if you, could, yep. Is that good? That's perfect. All right, and yep. then the other one, right? And then the other one, yep. And what about the... Oh. So I have some straps. I'm just going to yeah, get myself comfortable. Right. Okay. So this is a strap that holds my body in, stabilizes, okay. and it singles out the ability because then my body doesn't move and I'm not... my. I only have the ability in my shoulders and my arms. Right. So I want to single out those muscles so that I'm not worried about what my body's moving all the time. I just want to move the pedals. Uh -huh. I'm single out the stroke. Right. And I only learned that just as I started to race. Right. So these are going through these. So the there's, yep, loops, right? they fold back, double back. Yep. Oh, it's long here. Yeah. There. Those. How often do you ride? Um, five times a week. Five times a week, wow. With this heat, it's been a little unbearable. So we get out early in the morning. <laughs> a early morning, or I actually have a, an indoor trainer and I'll ride indoors in the air conditioning. There are a lot of barriers that you have removed for a lot of the participants and beneficiaries, I guess, of the yeah. Shelley Gautier Foundation. Yeah. What other barriers are there that need to be desperately removed? I think the biggest one is that in communities, um, I pay taxes just like you do, but there isn't anything available for them to go for a ride. And with the Shelley Gautier Parasport Foundation, We've shown them that you can get bikes, trikes, tandems, 
and make them available to people and get volunteers to help them and have programs that get them out of their houses and get them involved in their communities. And I think that the biggest barrier we have right now is to get communities involved with getting those people out of their homes, onto a bike, and have fun. It was a total dream come true today to ride with one of my heroes. And it's a fantastic thing to learn that there are things that can be done right now to support those with physical disabilities. It's great to learn something as simple as a bike ride can make the world a more inclusive place.